Good morning, boys and girls. This morning, Rook will be saying our memory verse. Hey kids, and then he would say, Daphia 2450, choose you this day whom ye will serve. Yay! I am excited about this song today. I want everyone to stand up as Alice comes and sings, Onward Christian Soldiers. Onward Christian Soldiers. Marching as to war With the cross of Jesus Going on before Christ the royal master Leads against the foe Forward into battle See his banner go Onward Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. Onward, then ye people, join our happy throng, blend with us your voices in the triumph song. Boys and girls, today we'll be in Kings, 1 Kings chapter 18. If you remember the previous weeks, we've been talking about the prophet Elijah. Let me go ahead and read this verse to you. In verse 1 it says, And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. If you remember, God told Elijah, that there be no rain in the land of Israel, and there wasn't. For three long years, there had not been one drop of rain. Now what happens? What happens to a land when there is no rain for a long time? Well, you're absolutely right. <laughs> when there's no rain, there's no water to drink. When there's no rain, there's, there, there's no water to cook your food with. Uh, no place to wash your clothes. No place to grow food. When there is no rain for a long time, the pe people, they have a hard time, time living. Well, we see here that Ahab and Elijah are going to meet. And Ahab is going to blame Elijah. Listen to this. King, king Ahab rushed to where Elijah was. And the first thing the king did was to blame Elijah for the fact that there was no rain for three years. Verse 17 says, And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? You know, King Ahab looked at Elijah and he said, You are the reason. You are the cause for no rain. Ah, <laughs> Elijah was quick to tell the king that it was not him that caused the rain to stop. No, it wasn't Elijah. Elijah told him, It is your fault. Who caused God to quit sending the rain. You have sinned against God. You have turned against God. You have worshipped the false god Baal. Then Elijah told the king. That he should gather all the people of Israel. And he, and he told him also. He, he said I want you to call all the false prophets together also. Call all those prophets that worship Baal. Have them all come together. And there were 450 false prophets of Baal. All oh, these men had led God's people. Into worshiping a false god. And there was evil in the land. So Ahab. He called all the people. 
He called all the false prophets together. They were all gathered together in one place. Then Elijah, the prophet of God, speaks. So everyone was present. Elijah got up to speak. He turned first to the people of Israel and he asked them a question. Elijah asked, listen to this boys and girls. Here's the question. How long will it take you to make up your minds about who is the true God? If God is the true God, then follow him. But if Baal is the true God, then follow him. Make up your mind. You can't follow both. Here they were. Here were the people of God. And they had, they had sinned by turning away from God. But God still loved them. God is so loving. God is so giving. And he was willing to give his people another chance to turn away from their sin and to follow him. Boys and girls, each and every one of us, we have choices that we make. We have a choice who we will love, a choice who we will serve. You know, we can love sinful things that do not please God, or we can choose to love God. We can choose to serve God. You can't do both. If you are going to serve God, then you must love him with your whole heart. In Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, we read, Joshua spoke to the people of God and he told them that he had to make, that they had to make a choice who they were served. Let me go ahead and read the verse. He says, choose you this day whom ye will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Are you serving the Lord, boys and girls? Is your family serving the Lord? You know, we have the same choice in our life today, who we will love. And who we will serve. You know I praise you choose. To serve God each day. Well when Elijah asked the people to make. The choice who they would serve. They didn't answer. They didn't answer. Perhaps they just looked at each other. They were waiting for someone else to answer. You, you go ahead and answer first. They, they didn't answer. There was a question. But Elijah has a test, and I may call it a contest. And this was going to be a test between the God of heaven, the true God, and this false God, Baal. Well, Elijah began to, uh, to speak to everyone that was gathered, and he laid out this test. The test was for Baal and God. He wanted the people to see if God or Baal would show them which one was real and mighty. He told the prophets to Baal. He said, I want you to go get two bulls. That was for a sacrifice. I, I want you to get some, some wood, but don't bring any fire. He told him to offer the bull as a sacrifice to Baal. And if Baal was a true God, then Baal would send fire to burn the sacrifice. They weren't going to use any matches. They weren't going to use a lighter. They weren't going to use any torches. Baal was supposed to send fire to consume this wood, this sacrifice. Oh my, let's see what happens here. So the, the, the false prophets, they got to work. They, they put the wood on the altar. Uh, they, they put the sacrifice there. It was early in the morning. The 450 false prophets, they got together and they began to call on Baal to, to send the fire. All morning long they called and called and called, but nothing happened. There was no voice from Baal. There was no fire from this false prophet. So the prophets begin to leap up and call out even louder. Elijah said to them, maybe you need to call louder. Maybe Baal is on vacation. Maybe he's taking a trip. Oh. Maybe he's talking to someone else, or maybe he's sleeping. Try to wake him up. Can you imagine how silly those 450 men looked jumping around and, and shouting to a false god? 
their God was no God at all. Baal could not answer because he did not exist. Well, it is now Elijah's turn. Or could I say God's turn? Well, Elijah, he dug a deep ditch around the entire altar. Then he put wood on top and he, and he placed a sacrifice on top of the altar. Then Elijah, he asked for, I'm going to say a strange thing. He asked for four barrels full of water. And, and they brought it to him. And he took this water and he dumped it on the wood and the altar. He, he just drenched it with water. Oh, but he wasn't done. He asked for four more barrels of water. Then he asked again for four more barrels of water. Twelve barrels of water all total came and he dumped it on the wood. Now let me ask you a question. Can fire burn all that wet wood? You think fire can, can burn that wood? It's, it's soaked. Well, Elijah stood before the altar and he called on God. Elijah did not jump around. Elijah did not beg God to send fire. Instead, Elijah simply looked to heaven and began to pray a simple prayer. Listen to the prayer that he prayed. It's in verse 37. Hear me, O Lord. Hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Boys and girls, instantly, when Elijah finished this prayer, God sent fire from heaven. The fire was so hot. It burned the sacrifice. It burned the wood. It even says that it burned the stones that, are, that were around there and consumed all the water. Our God is a mighty God. This was a miracle from God. Only God could do such an amazing thing. Can you imagine? Well, the people, they now had a choice. Everyone could see how real and powerful the true God was. Now, everyone knew that God was the true God. They knew Baal was just a, a false God. He was an idol. He had no power. He never existed. And the people of Israel, so they fell on their faces and they began to worship God. Verse 39 says, when all the people saw it, they fell on their face and they said, the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. So when the people saw the fire from heaven, then they believed. We must decide. You must decide. I must decide. We all have choices of who we are going to serve in life. You may choose to serve your toys. Uh, you may choose to serve uh, sports. You may choose to serve other people. And there's nothing wrong with those things. But we are to serve the Lord. We are to serve our God. We need to choose God over everything else. Earlier, we had read a verse from Joshua where it says, Choose you to this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The Bible says that each person must choose who they will serve in this life. How about you? I love to serve the Lord. It's a joy. It's a privilege. But boys and girls, let me ask you this question. Is God your God? Have you asked God? To forgive your sin and be your God. The Bible says we are all sinners. But that God loved us. That he loved you so much. 
that he sent Jesus Christ to the earth to die on the cross for our sins. And only Jesus Christ can take away our sins. And he will do it for you. But you must ask. You must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you asked Jesus to take away your sin? Has there been a time, boys and girls, when you prayed and told Jesus that you have sinned, that you have done those things which are wrong? What are some of those things? Oh, it's lying. It's cheating. It's disobedience. All those things are sin. And the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus died for you. Jesus died for your mom and dad. Jesus died for your grandparents. He died for everyone that you know. You need today to ask Jesus Christ to be your savior. Let's go ahead and pray, boys and girls. Dear Jesus, we do thank you for this day that you've given to us. We thank you for these boys and girls and parents that may be listening. And Jesus, we just thank you that we can serve the living, true God. And we would pray that you would just bless these children. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Hi, boys and girls, and welcome back to Children's Church. I'm here with my friend, Valerie. Hi, Gavin. Are you ready for some questions about our Bible story today, Valerie? I sure am. Who did King Ahab blame for no rain? King Ahab blamed Elijah for no rain. What did Elijah tell the king was the real reason there was no rain? Elijah told Ahab that he was the problem because he worshipped Baal. Good job. How many false prophets of Baal were there? Ooh, I think that was 450. What did the priest of Baal do morning until night? They called upon the name of Baal and said, Oh, Baal, hear us. Good answer. And now the last question, did Baal send fire? No, Baal is not the true God. Isn't it cool how God cares for us? Bye, see you next week.